<laughs> All right. I want to do uh, pre-trib rapture moment number 15. I want to talk about the zombie apocalypse and the rapture. thought this would be kind of an appropriate setting. Old abandoned cabin. But um, I'm going to go first to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20 through 22. The Bible says, he's making weird noises, But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Now, what is the true definition of a quote unquote zombie? Something that's coming back from the light or from the dead. That's what you have as a zombie. So, in a sense, from a worldly standpoint, Jesus Christ coming back from the dead, they would probably call him a zombie. Okay? And they're going to call us zombies too. But I don't want to get ahead of myself. The fact of the matter is, the dead are going to come up someday. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 35 says, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? It's a good question. Now what are Christians going to look like when the dead in Christ rise first? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 36 says, Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, and another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last, man, or the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy, the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, now look at this, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. One day you're going to look like Jesus Christ in the resurrection. Verse 50, 1 Corinthians 50, 1550. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth, incor or neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Be behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Okay, the dead in Christ are going to come up, and they're going to be incorruptible at that point in time. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So in other words, the promise of the resurrection says, then abound in the work of the Lord. It doesn't say get prepared to survive seven years of the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh-uh. Abound in the work of the Lord, for your labor is not in vain. Well, when is your labor rewarded? The judgment seat of Christ. Now, has this resurrection of dead saints happened before? Yeah, it has. Matthew chapter 27, verses 50 through 53 says, Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, in other words. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. 
And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Hmm. And came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. So, what would you have called that? Well, people lost the world would probably call that a zombie apocalypse or something like this. Now, I don't believe that the Old Testament saints were these rotted, dead, half-dead corpses that were going around trying to eat people, like the modern zombie movement you know, tries to teach. But, you know, the fact is, there were dead saints that came up at the first part of the resurrection. See, the resurrection has three parts. You can read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 there. It has the first fruits, which is Jesus Christ and the Old Testament saints that came up at his resurrection. That's the first fruits. Secondly, you have the rapture, the body of Christ. Thirdly, you have tribulation saints. Okay, and I believe too, you know, if you get into the whole thing, you know, probably there's some kind of resurrection of, of them that happens at the end of the millennial kingdom too. And I mean, that's, there's a lot involved there. But the point is, there are different parts to the first resurrection. The first resurrection is not over until after the end of the millennium. Okay, very important to get that distinction. So are the dead saints going to come up? Yes. Dead saints will come up before the living saints. Very interesting. You say, but I don't know, Brian. I, I don't know if I can believe in this thing of a Christian saint being considered as a zombie. You know, to the lost world. The dead saints when they come up. Well, let me read two verses for you. Because I hate to tell you, if you're really truly saved and not conform to this world, they already look at you as a zombie. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 15 and 16 says, For we are unto God a sweet savor of Christ in them that are saved and in them that perish. There's the distinction. Them that are saved, them that perish. Saved and lost. To the one we are the savor of death unto death, and to the other the savor of life unto life, and who is sufficient for these things. The fact of the matter is, Christian, the dying that you do in your body, the dying to the world, where you don't conform to the world, where you don't want to be like the world, the lost world looks at you like you're some kind of a freak. You know, the Bible talks about when you don't run to the same excess of riot, you know, as the lost world, they look at you and they go, you know, you're some kind of weirdo. You know, what do you mean you aren't going to go out partying this weekend? You're New Year's Eve and you're not going to get drunk? Huh? Yeah, they look at you like you're some kind of a zombie. They look at you like you're some kind of a weirdo. Now, wouldn't it be some kind of a thing? And this zombie phenomenon is getting huge. It's getting gigantic. There are stores that specialize in selling things to prepare people for a zombie apocalypse. Could it be that there's actually an underlying message there? That they're actually trying to say to people that when the dead saints come up, come up and you have the graves opening, and dead Christians coming up out of the graves. And I, I can't say that the dead Christians are going to go into the city and be seen of many and stuff before they're actually called up. The Bible does say in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, boom, like that. But what about an explanation? All these people are being conditioned to have their minds already prepared for the trauma that's going to come when the rapture actually hits. And what better explanation to have all these graves open in graveyards than to say that there's been some kind of a zombie type of a thing. And people would actually look at it favorably. They'd actually say, oh, this is so cool. Instead of going, wait a second, the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's what those Christians were saying. That was the rapture. See? Instead of doing that, you spin it and you say, oh no, it was a zombie apocalypse starting. Hollywood has been preparing people for this time of Jacob's trouble for years and years and years and years and years. They've been preparing people for what's coming. And I just think it's interesting. Is there going to be a zombie apocalypse? A raising of dead people back to life? Yep. And to the lost world, the Christians are going to seem like zombies. They're going to be afraid of us. And by the way, when the body of Christ comes back, it's really going to be something. 
because when we come back with Jesus Christ, we go out to collect the nations and gather the nations to bring them to judgment. And the Bible says that we can fall on a sword, back in the book of Joel, that they can fall on a sword and receive no hurt. And the mighty men in that day are going to flee away naked. So you talk about a, an undead army or something like this, an immortal army, when we come back with Jesus Christ, then we're not going to be these rotted, hideous corpse things or whatever. Again, they're trying to do that to make it look like Christians are bad. Okay. But I will say something else too. One of the seals, the fourth seal in the book of Revelation chapter 6, it actually talks about um, death. The rider on the, on the pale horse is death and hell follows with him. And it says that power was given unto them. Not just him, them. Now wouldn't it be interesting if some of the inhabitants or all of the inhabitants of hell actually come up and go out to kill people? You could have a real zombie apocalypse then with horrible, disfigured, hideous people that really true are try truly trying to kill people. You know, not like the body of Christ. Not like the saints, the dead saints being raised up and going up to be with Jesus Christ in the clouds. So, is this zombie phenomenon that we're seeing in, in popular culture today, is it part of end times prophecy? You better believe it. Absolutely. And it's just one more way that proves to me that Hollywood is preparing people for the resurrection of dead saints. Which, by the way, the resurrection of dead saints doesn't appear in any of the second coming accounts. Like Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. Nowhere in those accounts does it say anything about dead saints coming up. Dead saints rising first and living following is something that happens at the rapture of the body of Christ. Don't, for, don't fall for the post-trib rapture lie. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.